All right, give it up right now for Leslie Wilson. Uh, when I was pregnant with my first child, I sat at the dining room table filling out a mountain of paperwork. It was insurance stuff and medical forms. I mean, you know the drill. So I come to a question that says, do you want an epidural? There were two boxes, yes and no. I added in a third one and put, duh. Yeah. <laughs> then the next question was, if you have a boy, do you want him circumcised? So I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't know. I'll ask my husband. He was in the other room watching TV, so I holler into him, honey, if we have a boy, do we want him circumcised? No. Okay. So I'm marking off no circumcision, and then I kind of want to know, well, why don't we want him circumcised? So I said, why don't we want him circumcised? Well, I want him to look like me. Okay, that sounds reasonable. I would like him to look like you, too. <clears throat> Fast forward four months to uh, the birth of our child. We're in the hospital, you know, timing contractions and whatnot. Now, m call me paranoid, but it seemed like every person who came within 20 feet of me, and we're talking doctors, nurses, uh, orderlies, uh, candy stripers, gift shop personnel, everyone was confirming our decision for no circumcision. It's written on the, our chart at the base of my bed, no circ, in huge black letters. So I'm starting to think that maybe this isn't the best decision. You know, maybe there's something weird about us not wanting to have our son circumcised. Now, truly, um, I, I felt like I was in the middle of something that was kind of like uh, um, glee meets um, meet scrubs with some little shop of horrors thrown in because uh, the hospital personnel all of a sudden donned gowns and used bedpans for a hat and they did this little song. It was, no circ, no circ, no circ, no circ. She says no circumcision. Is that the right decision? That's N-O-C-I-R-C, N-O-C-I-R-C. Then we won't do a circumcision. Jazz hands. <laughs> Well, hours later, I did deliver a boy, and we took him home without having him circumcised. Uh, about two days later, my best friend Rebecca came over, and she's, uh, we've known each other since we were 10 and 8, so she has carte blanche with anything, you know, to kind of say to me if, if she's got a point. So she accompanies me upstairs for a diaper change, does the appropriate ooing and aahing over the nursery. And then as I'm taking off my son's diaper, she's you know, doing this pretty close. I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable with the closeness. And then she just lets out a gasp. And she says, you didn't have him circumcised? And I, I said, no. Well, oh my gosh, why didn't you? And I said, well, we just wanted him to look like Brett. Well, does he? No, he doesn't look like Brett. <laughs> well, that's because Brett is circumcised and your son isn't. Well, the, my indignant thought was, oh, yeah, like I don't know if my son, my husband is circumcised or not. Well, then it dawned on me. I didn't know if my son, husband was circumcised or not. So here's how this can actually happen. And obviously, my husband didn't know if he was circumcised or not. Now, okay. When you grow up in a um, Texas town and 75% of your school is um, Catholic, and you have in your brain that only Jews are circumcised because all you see your whole life are Catholics, then, you know, you think you look like them and kind of you do the math from there. So, yes, my husband was that naive. So that evening we had a great, a very, very enlightening conversation. Uh, and we changed our minds. And so in the time-honored Jewish tradition, we had our son circumcised on the eighth day. Thank you. All right.